Picture this, you're cozied up, off to read your favorite series. The world around you blurs, and the words fly off their pages. Kingdoms rise, the forest expands, and the characters chant their cry towards victory. Then you're snapped out of the world. You're back to reality, and you close the book in your hands. We've all been there. Whether it be a game, a book, or a show, I'm sure at least once in your life, you've lost yourself to a different world. And just for even a little bit, you've escaped reality. For Kim dok -ja, this is a familiar feeling. He's a reader, and for most of his life, he's been able to escape a little bit of his own reality by clinging onto those stories. He's so much of a reader that his name alludes to the word reader itself. It might be the only defining skill he takes pride in. Reading is his refuge, and our story starts as his favorite web novel is coming to an end. Three ways to survive an apocalypse, Twasa for short. Dokcha has followed Twasa for over a decade, and 3,149 chapters later, he finds himself to be the only reader to see the end of the novel. In fact, he's been the only reader for thousands of chapters now. Essentially, it was a story written for him, and only him. Dokcha thanks the author for the ending, and as a gift, the author sends him a complete copy of the novel before locking it behind a paywall. But, as the paywall activates, Dokcha finds himself facing a new reality. A reality that was once within the very novel in his hands. So, the apocalypse begins. But, Dokcha? Dokcha is an omniscient reader. He has all the knowledge of this world that they've been thrust into. And perhaps, could he stay alive? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint. Kim Dok Ja, our main character, may seem like an ordinary guy, as with every isekai that we consume, but as the series goes on, you slowly start to realize how fleshed out Dok Ja is. He has his own greed, he has his own moral values, he has his own story. And I know that sounds insane, like, what kind of main character doesn't have his own story? But with Dok Ja, he has a story independent of the story, yet intertwined so masterfully that it affects the story. Again, I sound insane, but once you read it, you'll get it. Every single decision Dokja has made and will make is rooted in his story. And it's not only Dokja that's crafted with care. The rest of the cast is just as complex and compelling. There was never a moment that I felt a character was 2D, and it really puts you in the shoes of Dokja, who's seeing the very characters he's read about live right before his eyes. And the way the authors wrote the rest of the cast reflects this, and they breathe life into every single character. Like, look at this panel. I don't even know who this is, nor do I think it matters in the context of the scenario, but I'm ready to die for this character, take them as my constellation, and take over the apocalypse. Anyways, where were we? Ah, the characters. Not only are they well written, but they're also diverse in age, in background, in gender, in morals, in beliefs, in personalities, in general beings. What I absolutely love the most is that every single character has development, and it's done in a way that doesn't feel cheap. Of course, they have developments in their power and character, but they also have developments in their relationships, in their worldviews, and their possible futures. All this development is done so masterfully that it doesn't muddy the main story. Instead, it complements the message they're trying to convey in the arc. Again, they're living, breathing characters, and I really thank the authors for putting so much care into every single one of them. But it's too early to get sentimental. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yoo Jung Hyuk, the main character. No, not the main character of ORV, but the main character of Twasa, the MC that Kim Dok Cho himself has followed and rooted for for over a decade. Yoo Jung Hyuk is a regressor, and for those unfamiliar with these terms, basically he cannot die, and when he dies, the world starts over, and he has to relive it until he finds the end to this apocalypse. So yeah, he kinda has it rough. But also, with every MC, he is overpowered both with knowledge and natural skill. At first glance, it's easy to simplify Jung Hyuk. I'm guilty, guilty as charged, but he isn't Kim Dok Ja's favorite character for no reason, and there might be something more behind that stone cold glare of his. For those familiar with this genre, you may recognize Oravi's system. It's similar to a video game. A window pops up and tells the players some info. 
What sets ORV apart is the system isn't actually run by a program. It's run by these creatures called the Dokkebi, whose goal is to profit off these celestial beings called the constellations by using the worlds they invade as pawns for entertainment. Then these constellations can invest their money into incarnations, or in other words, the players. Then the players can use that money to get stronger. So yes, our characters are essentially streamers, the constellations are the audience, and the Dokkebi is the middleman company who gets a cut of that profit. What I like about the setup is that it isn't a simple if and then situation. Since real beings are behind this operation, you can see our characters find loopholes and bargain and barter their situation to their own benefit. It's a mind game, and it takes psychology and a little bit of manipulation. Currently, ORV has about 200 chapters in the manhwa and about 500 chapters in the novel, but the pacing of this manhwa is consistent. If anything, the arcs just keep getting better and better. And again, because we're slowly getting to know these characters as the story goes on, the more we root for them. And as the stakes get higher, the more devastated we are to see them fail. I want to reference another video I found about ORV because I don't think I can explain it any better than they do. ORV is like climbing a mountain. And once you think you've reached a peak, there's another peak hiding. There's never a dull moment. And I think what stands out to me the most is while a scenario is happening, there's always some off-camera developments happening at the same time, just like they would in the real world. And really, I attribute this masterful writing to the authors. Yes, authors with an S for plural. ORV is actually co-written by a married couple who goes by the pen name Sing Shang. They live quite a private life, so I couldn't dig up much about them other than that they published another novel before ORV called The World After the Fall. ORV to me is a love letter to readers and writers. Dokja is more than an overpowered MC, and at his core, he's a reader who's fallen in love with these fictional worlds, characters, and systems, just as I have. And we really get to see the world through his eyes, like a friend telling you about their favorite book. And although I have yet to read the rest of the series, it's crazy to me how much this manhwa has already etched its way into my heart. As Dokja fights to see the ending he wants, I'll be along for the ride to see the ending I want as a fellow omniscient reader. This has been Day, signing out. Keep on dreaming, peeps. Bye!